Let's bring in Robert Gucci, who himself, who has also written a book about Donald Trump and is a senior lecturer at Lancaster University. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, what do you make of uh, this book right now? There have been many books, including one uh, by yourself, but how damaging is this one, especially in an election year? Well, we have to look at uh, what these accusations are and also remember some context around all of this. First, uh, John Bolton himself uh, it was very hawkish as a national security advisor and, and was no friend to uh, the left, um, often um, clashing with Donald Trump himself. He was a very divisive uh, character in the roles that, that he played within the administration. There's some context uh, there as, as uh, anti-Trumpers start to celebrate him spilling the beans, uh, as it were. Um, the, the second part is Donald Trump's been impeached. Uh, if things in this book were impeachable offenses, one would have hoped that that would have gone through the system uh, ahead of time to uh, be addressed at the time of, of, of impeachment, and then when the Senate decided uh, to end those uh, those calls. And then, and then third, uh, you know, we're, the United States is in the middle of uh, a crisis, as is the rest of uh, the world with, with uh, coronavirus. And uh, they have to, people have to ask themselves, look, do I really care about the demeanor and the practices of the president as long as uh, the jobs are getting done. Um, I have my job. I got food on the table. That may seem really simplistic, um, but that's kind of the cultural shift that the United States is at right now. You're absolutely right. But it does seem that uh, the Trump administration uh, cares because they've asked for an emergency ruling to stop uh, uh, Bolton's book coming out next week. Do you think that they can actually do that? It seems, I, I'm not a lawyer, but it seems very unlikely that a judge would stop the publication of this book. Look, that every time an official who signed documents of secrecy have to go, you know, they have to go through uh, with the FBI or NSA or whatever the organization is, they have to go through and make sure that what's being released isn't a threat to national security. Uh, so that process was done in this case. It was done uh, over the period of four months. And it, that those are grueling processes to go through. Uh, and so, you know, Donald Trump doesn't like uh, bad PR, but at the end of the day, he goes by the idea that there's no such thing as bad PR. He'll take this and spin it somehow. And as we saw um, his intellectual use of the word dope to describe uh, uh, John Bolton um, is his first attack. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be more and more as the book comes out. We have to also remember another book is planned to come out by Donald Trump's niece, uh, quite soon. And so it'll be interesting to see what is in there. But all of these things are kind of insider politics and, and funny games for people who don't like the Trump administration. Unfortunately, instead of being seen as maybe some real issues that are going on inside the White House that could affect, uh, you know, the, the, the country's future. Let me open up uh, this front with you with regards to the US and China. There's been so much tension, as we know, with regards to the coronavirus pandemic. And yet this claim um, that Trump personally asked uh, Xi Jinping to help him win the 2020 US presidential race. Where does that leave uh, US China ties now? Oh, I'm sure Donald Trump was asking lots of people to help him uh, win the election. Uh, at, at this at this point, there was a business transaction, right? I mean, a lot of the things that are coming through Bolton's uh, book, it seems that they're Donald Trump's approach at how to do business. Uh, and so, uh, you know, times change quickly in business. Uh, and if he sees his job uh, as the president to do America's business or his own business, uh, that can ebb and flow from, from day to day. Uh, he's, he's said uh, horrible things about some uh, members of his own constituencies and then has gone on uh, record the next day saying how much he loves those constituencies. Uh, he's, he's back and forth and he plays it as, uh, as it comes. But at the end of the day, he's going to do what is best for a deal that he wants. Uh, and so whether they helped him or not, whether they'll rig an, an election with him or not, uh, in the future, he's going to play this, uh, you know, day to day and and uh, move us into distractions so that we're not necessarily thinking about it, using language that that we end up talking about instead of the actual policies that that are that are happening. And the last one for you, Robert, how credible is John Bolton? Well, that's that's where I started from, and and that's that's one of the things that we don't talk about when we have somebody who's coming out um, saying things about 
Donald Trump if uh, that that are that are nasty if we don't like Donald Trump. Uh, we, we we tend to not ask those questions. We tend to to get around the nasty. Uh, and you know, John Bolton, uh, on some accounts, was very consistent in his role as uh, national security advisor. Uh, he was present. He he gave good planning. Uh, but on on the left side, he was seen as hawkish. He was seen as wanting to constantly intervene uh, internationally through military force, and that's something that gets forgotten. Uh, in these conversations. And so what, what we also need to do is have a balanced conversation about who was this guy, what were the critiques when he was when he was, you know, at the at the table in that room, as he as he says, what role did he play in the harm uh, internationally, if any, uh, not just what Donald Trump was doing. So it, it's really looking at this piece um, uh, with a little bit more context about about where it came from and who's winning and who's losing. Robert Gucci, thank you so much for your time and your analysis. We really appreciate it here on the News Hour. Thanks.